public hearing called to order for August the 4th. We have public hearing. Um, Mr. Nottebach, you want to present the Mills rates for 2020? Yes, sir, Mr. Board President. Thank you. Today we're uh, at the public meeting today. We're going to present two resolutions related with the millage. Resolution number one reads, be it resolved by the Tangipahoa Parish School System of the Parish of Tangipahoa, Louisiana, in a public meeting held today, August 4th, 2020, which meeting was conducted in accordance with the open meeting law and the additional requirements of Article 7, Section 23C of the Louisiana Constitution and Revised Statute 47, colon, 1705B, that the following adjusted millage rates be and they are hereby levied upon the dollar of the assessed valuation of all property subject to ad valorem taxation within said parish for the year 2020 for the purpose of raising revenue. Constitutional District 100, millage key 170047, millage amount 4.05 mills. Hammond District number one, Hammond Magnet School Tax, millage key 170085, 14.94 mills. Hammond District number one, alternative program, millage key 170048, 2.99 mills. Be it further resolved that the assessor of the Parish of Tangipahoa shall extend upon the assessment roll for the year 2020 the taxes herein levied, and the tax collector of said parish shall collect and remit the same to the said taxing authority in accordance with law. We will also visit at tonight's board meeting a second resolution, resolution number two. It reads as follows. Be it resolved by the Tangipahoa Parish School System of the Parish of Tangipahoa, Louisiana, in a public meeting held today, August 4th, 2020, which meeting was conducted in accordance with the open meeting law and the additional requirements of Article 7, Section 23C of the Louisiana Constitution and Revised Statute 47, colon, 1705B, that the taxing district voted to increase the millage rates, but not in excess of the prior year's maximum rates on all taxable property shown on the official assessment roll for the year 2020 and when collected the revenues from said taxes shall be used only for the specific purposes for which said taxes have been levied. Said millage rates are constitutional district number 100, 4.05 mills. Adjusted rate, the 2020 level rate, levy rate is 4.06 mills. Hammond District number one, Hammond Magnet School Tax. Adjusted rate 14.94 mills. The 2020 levy rate 15 mills. Hammond District number one alternative program. Adjusted rate 2.99 mills. The 2020 levy 3.0 mills. Sumner District number 116. The 2020 levy is 10.0 mills. Independence District number 39A, the 2020 levy is 12.5 mills. Be it further resolved that the assessor of the Parish of Tangipahoa shall extend upon assessment roll for the year 2020 the taxes herein levied and the tax collector of said parish shall collect and remit the same to the taxing authority in accordance with law. I've read the, the two resolutions that will be considered tonight for the board and at this time Board President, if there are any public comments, we would take them now. <clears throat> Do we have any board, any public comments on the millage rates? Hearing none, no action needs to be taken tonight. That's correct. Any board? Ask a question about it. Yeah, absolutely. Or do we need to wait until the board needs to Either way. You can go ahead and do it now, Mr. Duncan. Just, I just wanted to make sure, Mr. Schnaderbach, that, that according to the agenda, it says that we're increasing our millage rates but in reality we're keeping the rates at the same rate that we collected last year am i correct that's correct we but, are increasing back to the maximum allowed that we're able to collect which was the same amount the same rate that we collected last year that's correct but there's a statute where the legislature or somebody in their wisdom said that if we want to keep the rate the same this year that we collected last year that we have to pass a resolution that calls it an increase correct 
Okay. But it's the same. It's the same rate <laughs> as last year. But we have to call it an increase. We could, yes. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure. Yes, sir. Thanks for clearing that up. <laughs> Any other board comments? Hearing none, well, that concludes our public hearing on the tax millage. Okay, give me a second. Regular meeting for Tuesday, August 4th, called to order. Roll call, Mr. Jenkins. Can you give me a second? All right. I encourage you to join the meeting if possible. Yep. Should be able to join the meeting now. Mm-hmm. Yes. Ms. Richards? Mr. Toller? Here. Ms. Abrams? Here. Mr. Westmoreland? Present. Mr. Duncan? Here. Mr. Bush? Here. Mr. Moore? Here. Ms. Simmons? Here. Ms. Dominguez? Present. Thank you. I'd ask you to please stand and join us as we do the Pledge of Allegiance, led by Ms. Abrams. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Item C, 1C, consider approval of board minutes from July 21st, 2020. Do I hear a motion to accept the minutes as read? Make a motion. Motion made by Ms. Abrams. Second. Second by Ms. Dominguez. Online voting. Voting is open. Yes, Miss Cindy, something's happening with my computer again. Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Item 2A, virtual content presentation by Miss Spring, Miss Spears, and Miss Foster. Ms. Dilley, do you want to introduce them? Or? Yes, I would like to introduce to you our, our team. Um, I want to say tech team. They're all pretty techy. Um, but they work, have worked fearlessly in uh, getting the virtual content um, pulled together. We've actually started since March, uh, beginning of April. Um, and what they want to do tonight is kind of give the board and the public a glimpse of what it would look like, I believe. That's the goal. Thank you, Ms. Stilley. So as Ms. Stilley said, we started this project back at the beginning of April. We put together a team of teachers to start writing content to offer a virtual option for our students. And so what we've been doing since then, we got together with our content leaders and our tech team and we started having Zoom meetings. And that was our first challenge, myself definitely, learning how to Zoom with one another. Then we put our team together and we started Zooming with our team. We Zoomed by content, by grade level, and with technology to get past the technology questions that our teachers had. What we're doing now as they're wrapping up building the content is we're going in and we're checking it from the student side. So we want to see what the students will see to make sure that links are not broken, that things are where the teachers have said they're going to be. So it's very user friendly for our students and for our parents. Very important that we've built this content not just for our full virtual students, but all of our teachers are going to have access to this content. So when a teacher is out for an extended period of time, rather than having a substitute just pass out worksheets to students, they're going to have access to the same curriculum that all of our students will have um, in the classroom. And so our plan moving forward is we're going to roll this out on Friday to our teachers. So when our teachers return, we're going to be able to um, show them the beginning of what our, our teachers have been working on all summer. And that's what we're going to do now. We're going to take a few minutes. Jill Foster is going to come up and Dina Spears is going to be on the computer clicking around and showing you a little bit of what we've built of each content area. Good evening. We're so excited to share with you some things that we've been working on. And this has been a team effort. 
So first I wanted to share, just talk a little bit about what we're building. This is not new content for our teachers. So our teachers have still been, are still going to use the same curriculum that we've used. This is just in a different format. So, because uh, we haven't released it to teachers yet, we just gave them some sneak peeks. It's the same curriculum, it's the same math problems, it's the same um, text that we've been using for ELA. So teachers still need to continue to study their curriculum, learn the standards, um, know the text, complete, you know, work out the math problems. We just built it into a digital format for all teachers and students. So students will have access to these lessons if they're in a traditional setting, blended or virtual. So this will help with our new teachers because, um, you know, with training the new curriculum, we're, you know, we really have these top six things that we need to do with our new teachers. This is helping them learn the curriculum as we go. So we're kind of been sharing this with all teachers that no matter where our students will be, this is the same curriculum, the same um, problems in the text, no matter where our students are. So that was, I mean, so I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the virtual lessons. If Dina will click. This is an example of pre-K. So everything that a regular pre-K student would do day to day, it's built in a virtual way. So we have videos embedded. So these slides would, will be assigned to a pre-K student. Parents and guardians, of course, will have to assist them. But there's assignments in here. This is the same curriculum, the same uh, materials that they would be using in a traditional setting. So that's kind of what an example of pre-K. And then I'm going to show you some ELA examples. This is, we're calling this um, the ELA Guidebooks because that's what the curriculum is called, the ELA Guidebooks. These are just Google Slides that our team has built and put together to be user-friendly for students and teachers. We have an icon page so students, when they're navigating through it, and also teachers, they, they will know what things mean. So keep going. Um, it's all straight from the curriculum. They, we have a table of contents, and those are the links that we're having to check before we release it to teachers. We have videos right here. This is an example of a video that a student will be on a Chromebook, watch a video, and then there's an activity. That little blue book is letting them know that they have to open up an interactive notebook. So Dina's going to share an interactive log. It's the same curriculum, same of everything that we've been using. So this is an example of, this is, um, high school. Once a student clicks in On Course Connect and the teacher assigns this, it makes a copy of their own. So this student will be able to interact with the slides. They can, they'll be able to type in. They will be able to voice over. They can add pictures. They can add videos. All of our teachers created this to be a digital, kind of like how we used to have worksheets before. This is in a digital format. So the student right there would double click and start typing. We have this for the babies too, but it might look different. They might have to add a picture there. And we're, we're teaching, we're going to be having videos for parents and guardians and students of how to do it. I think the kids are going to be wonderful and love this. It's more of a, an adult issue. Oh, wait, I don't know how to do that. But once we start showing, they're going to be able to navigate. So it's kind of the same. This is the same exact activity that we used last year in a traditional classroom. We just have it in a digital format. So we're going to now go to math. I want to show you a math example in second grade. And we have, it's a digital notebook. So same curriculum, same lessons, same structure. We have a table of contents to make it easier for the teacher, the parent, and the student. It's the same exact um, information from the curriculum, an icon page. What our teachers have done that created these digital notebooks, they have videoed themselves teaching pieces of the math problems and the work. So, um, it's, it would be a great tool for a new teacher to use that have never taught math before because they can go and watch the videos themselves. In a traditional setting, the teachers would not press play on the video. They would actually demonstrate how to do the math problems. So it was a lot of work and a lot of embedding videos um, and linking them. So right there, a student will double click in the gray box and put their answers. So we have to teach and train teachers and students how to go and double click in the little box and type in your answer. Um, there's lots of tools within the Google Slides that will address the needs if a student is struggling or if they don't know how to type. There's little features in there and tools built in there that they can voice record themselves. So a lot of great, um, since all of our teach students will have one-to-one, -one, it's going to open up the digital world greatly. So do we, need to, we don't need to show another. We could show them a seventh grade. Can we show seventh? This is a seventh grade example. It's kind of the same format. Um, 
same exact content. We have a video embed in here of how this is created. Icon page to help. Everything that we created was to really allow the parent and the guardian and the student, it's easy for them to follow. And then if a teacher, when they zoom in with them, they can go to a certain slide. Students will be able to turn this notebook, notebook in back and forth. The, the teacher can give academic feedback. They can type academic feedback. They can comment on what the students are you know, putting as answers. That's an example of a video that a teacher was actually modeling how to work out this problem, this example. So the only difference from what we've done in the previous years with the curriculum is that we have digital embedded videos to help teach if the student is at their, at their house by themselves, you know, to help, instead of the teacher being right there in front of them, they will have a little video, and then when the Zoom, when the teacher contacts them, they'll follow up with them. This is science. Science and social studies is a little different. Science, um, we created a student website, because you know how when we were all went in school, we had a textbook. Remember, they had all the content and the documents? Well, this is kind of like their textbook. The students for science and social studies have a textbook. So there's a website. Go to the website first. We created a website that the student will be able to log in. The little link up there. Don't go yeah. to science. Okay. Okay, Let's show studies. history. Let's show we'll history. go to US history because it's kind of the same format as science. Unit one. So this is an example of a, a website. All, this is all locked to a Tangi student. So you have to have a Tangi email address to even get into this. This is a website. These ladies um, and gentlemen have put the text, the, wow. the curriculum, the content, all on this website. So a student will have to be, they will have to know how to log in. We will assign this link to them through On Course Connect. They will have their text, and then they will have an, an interactive notebook. This is just kind of an example of the website. They built from scratch. We had to teach the teachers that built this Google site how to even build a Google site. So there was a lot of learning that took place since March and April that the team that built this had to learn first. This is an interactive notebook that follows along with the website. And we have this for science and social studies. And remember, interactive is going back and forth between the teacher and the student. And if you're in traditional, blended, or virtual. This is just an interactive notebook. They'll have videos embedded in here as well. And students can go and double click type in answers. This is really packaging it up for our science and social studies teachers. So they're, they're, they're going to be excited when they see this. Still the same standards, the same GLEs that we've been using, <clears throat> following the same scope and sequence. We're not changing the order of how we've been teaching science and social studies. ELA might have a different order, but it's still the same curriculum. We just put it in a student-friendly, parent-guardian-friendly way that they can, they can gain access to it. Anything else we need to? So do you have any questions for us? Yeah. yeah. Question? <clears throat> Go ahead, Mr. Moore. Right. So um, how much time has been put into how long on an average does it take for the teachers to gain orientation to this, 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 uh, this type of classroom training? How much time it took to build yeah. this? Or? No. Thank you, on an average, how long is it taking the teachers? The biggest thing that we've been really pushing, and then Sharon, you can add it, is the curriculum's been the same. So uh, they, they have to know how to go and assign it to students, and we're going to have trainings on Monday. We've had um, the past two weeks trainings with teachers on the top six things that every adult in our district has to be familiar with. They have to be familiar with Zoom. They have to know all the components within Zoom in order to Zoom any of this to use it. They have to know how to assign it in on course. That's kind of quick and easy when we start showing the teachers. Um, there's a lot of teachers on campuses that are already familiar with it. The on-course um, classroom is not new. We've been having it for years. But this is more important. Uh, a lot of teachers are now expected to use it because now it's one-to-one -one devices. So now it's, it's going to be a lot helpful um, for parents, students, and teachers. It's not going to take us that long to, once they see this, they just have to learn how to Zoom. They have to learn how to assign it to students. Um, I don't know if that answers your question. Oh, it pretty much does. Go ahead, Tom. On the testing side, get, walk us through a scenario where little Johnny finishes the units and he has to do a test at that point. How does that work? We have assessments that we built in a digital format. 
So that's really up to the virtual teacher of when to assign it, but we have on course um, connect that once the teacher assigns an assessment or a quiz, um, they can time it, they can say when it should start, when it should end, and there's a lot of you know room for um, recommendations like the virtual teacher can be on the Zoom as they take in the assessments or the tests or the quizzes. Um, they've been built different ways. We have a digital assessments and quizzes built, or it might be a PDF that we have something that's called Cami, and then they can type on top of it. So there's d different ways that we can create. How do we ensure that little Johnny does little Johnny's work? And so we have a program called Go Guardian. Dean may be able to expand <clears throat> on that, where the teacher can actually watch the student right. taking the assessment. Yeah. And we're also having, um, I think, you know, every three weeks, conversations, principals, the teachers, and the, the parents or guardians to see how little Johnny's doing and, you know, to re reassessing things. If little Johnny's not turning in things, you know, we're, we're going to have conferences. So, and that's just kind of like in a regular classroom, in a traditional classroom. Some students are not turning in their work. What should the teacher do? How should they communicate with parents? So it's kind of the same thing, but in a digital way. Absolutely. The same so, I'm taking off. So if they are doing a test online, the teacher is going to be able to see all 20 of her students at one time take that test, or she have, does she have to click into each one of those individually to watch them take a test? So with, with our GoGuardian um, software, all Chromebooks are managed. Ms. Nina, could you step up to the mic? She's right here. Oh, it's got one there? Okay. Um, all, all our Chromebooks are managed through GoGuardian which is a software that allows teachers to see the students' screens. So it is a possibility that a teacher could be watching every one of her students take a test through GoGuardian. So she, it doesn't necessarily mean she's going to tell them all they have to log in at the same time to take this no, test. No, that is right. But she can see, like you can see the history and you can see what, a, what sites a kid was on that day. We also have lockdown browsers for like own course and DRC, which is through the State Department, has lockdown browsers that lock kids into the test. So then they can't get out of the test to go to another tab to search. So it kind of it kind of locks them into that testing environment. Um, it will be, you know, the teachers that are, the virtual teachers will have to work with their kids with, with the assessment since they are taking them at home. That's but they do have the ability to see what those kids are doing even though they're at home. My next question is that, is little Johnny in seventh grade doing virtual going to be the same teacher that is in class and well, let's say sixth grade because seventh grade's not going to be going in school, a sixth grader. Will that virtual teacher be the same classroom teacher? And so in the morning, the academic team is going to have a meeting with Ms. Vassell, and we're going to make some final decisions on that about who the actual full virtual teachers will be for K-6. Okay. So maybe, I'm just throwing a uh, scenario out there, if maybe we have 20 first grade students, we may have one teacher across the parish teach those 20 students virtual? Yes, for pre-K yes. through six. Yeah. Is that how it's going to basically work? Our, our, our envision is for it to be one teacher so it's equitable across the district. No matter what school you're assigned to, you have the same virtual lessons from the same teacher. Good deal. Yeah. Any other questions? In grades 7 through 12, just for clarification, because in phase mm -hmm. 2 that they're full virtual, the, their regular classroom teachers will be teaching those students virtually because those are the students they would have in their classes. Mr. <clears throat> Mangas? What, what other thing, Tom? Um, so so what, are, what, are we, uh, what are we doing to encourage uh, those of the parents who, uh, whose greatest fear is not being able to help their children um, who may be um, taking the virtual course or the, the distance, the distance uh, uh, learning? Uh, and, and the final decision for them is <clears throat> whether or not they can get their child through the curriculum uh, without the in-classroom instruction of a teacher. Are we doing, are we going to do something to help the parents who are virtually going to have to help, help out in this? Because they, they're going to play a big part in this as well. Well, the, the technology facilitators have already been building videos to, to help parents along the way, um, how to navigate through on Course Connect. But this, you know, virtual 
teaching is not going to, okay, student, here's your Chromebook and here's your lessons, you on your own for the whole week. There's going to be constant communication of whoever the virtual teacher is constantly, you know, I don't, I don't really know how that will look because I'm sure that depends on how the numbers and, you know, different schedules. Um, but it's not expected that the parent now needs to take over and teach their child the whole curriculum. Mm -hmm. They will have some constant communication with the teacher. <coughs> okay, thank you. So I have one last thing to, sh to show, um, and because it was, the, we've been really pushing the top six. These are the top six topics that every adult in Tangi really needs to understand and be comfortable and familiar with. This is our virtual content. I just kind of gave you a sneak peek of that. Um, and then Zoom, we have to all know the components within Zoom. Teachers have to know how to share screens. They have to know how to, to have breakout rooms for students that might need an inclusion teacher or, or they might have co-teachers in the Zoom meeting. So those are some things that we've been having a lot of trainings the past couple of weeks with our teachers. They have been zooming in with us and we've been going over that. On Course Classroom, you've been hearing a lot of that. That's where all of our teachers will go and assign this virtual content and also their regular content, if, they're not, if they don't have virtual content built for them, they can assign several things to their students through this platform. Chromebook procedures and tools. This is, you know, teachers have to get familiar, open up a Chromebook. They have to figure out how to turn it on first in order to know, to have, be successful with students. Teachers have to, you know, gain understanding. And we have tons of resources, presentations, videos in there to share with parents, students, and teachers of this is what a Chromebook is. And this is, these are some shortcuts about a Chromebook because it's different. And then Google Drive, that's another big um, six is that teachers need to be familiar with Google Drive. We're having trainings all Monday on all these top six, and also schools have been having individual trainings with teams of teachers at their schools. So no matter what the curriculum is or the content, we have to really be you know, up to par on these top six, and we've been really um, working with principals, assistant principals, curriculum support people, teachers all around these top six, and then we can deliver the content, no matter where our students are, home, in school? I, I just wanted to add here that so these six topics will be the focus of all the professional development for our teachers when they return on Thursday. So they'll have four full days of professional development in these six areas. Um, and so we also, on our employee survey, um, we asked our teachers out of these six things which things they needed the most support with. And I think that the team has adjusted the time to address those areas that they need the most support with. So the typical stuff that we might do on a normal year, you know, we're prioritizing. They need to know these six things in order to effectively um, utilize the technology in the Chromebooks uh, this year. Any other questions? I have a question. Dominguez? Uh, well, first I want to just thank you. This is yes. great information. This has been a lot of work. I think it's the unknown, but since I've been here on the board a long time, I remember when we first introduced, you have to put your lesson plans online and you have to take role online. Yeah. Yes. And you have to do the things like grades online that they weren't happy then and didn't take long. And the next year when they didn't have to do their lesson plans again, they were so happy that they were already in the computer. So I think that's what's gonna happen. So I appreciate y'all doing all that. It's very, um, <clears throat> foreign to us that don't have children in school. So I guess one question for us is, is there a way that, since I don't have a child that I can log in and look at, that we can get a, a opportunity or a way to log in as board members? Because we're, we're not capable of seeing that. Like when you did the surveys, I wanted to up, look at the surveys to see you know, what y'all were asking. And of course, since I didn't have a child or a kid, I couldn't. So if, if, I don't know if there's, that's even possible, but just throwing that out there. And then my other question about actual curriculum. So what about what y'all have put in here is the standard basic core things. What about the, uh, the drafting classes or welding, PE, ag, ROTC? What are those people going to do? I've had a lot of questions about that. And so uh, Carly Cooper, our career and technical um, coordinator, is working with different programs for those type of classes. Right now we're focused at the high school level, we're focused on just the six LEAP 2025 tested subjects to get those because we have one more year of edgenuity on our okay. contract. And so as we finish out that contract, we'll continue to build all the other academic classes that are outside those tested subjects. 
but um, Carly has a good plan in place for those career and technical classes. Okay, yeah, because that, that's kind of one of the big questions that I've asked. And it's like, how are they going to do that? So. Well, yeah. Mr. Dominguez, you can always come to my house with my two. And watch your kids yeah. see what to do. Yeah. I know. It's just be there. <clears throat> looking what they're showing us is great, but it would be so nice to be at home and just, like, look at it and kind of so if someone calls me and says, I don't know then I could at least answer with a little bit of knowledge about it, even though I don't have a child. Well, didn't, you, didn't you just say that if you had a Tangy School dot, sorry, Miss Cindy, Tangy School dot org email address, you can log in. Once, well, once we get it in in our um, Google Drive, mm -hmm. y'all will have access through through Google Drive. You won't okay. you won't be able to get into a student's own course connect, but you can have access to the um the, the digital content. notebooks in Google Drive once we get them packaged and get them where we need them to be. Okay. Okay. We great. Have it locked down to our TNG teachers mm -hmm. because we spent a lot of time building this and we want to <coughs> keep it in house, and so it's not out there oh, yeah. on the public domain Definitely. for anybody yes. to have yeah. access to. So that's our. Ms. Simmons? Yeah, uh, thank you so much for all you're doing. And uh, I wanted to ask, when the teachers start coming in Thursday, will they be bringing their computers? You're going to actually do that kind of training? Will they be bringing will they their computers with them, laptops, or what? The classroom. They, they, have, they have computers that in their classrooms. Oh, but they're going to come here, right? No. Mm -mm. Oh, okay, it's all going to be done. Yes, ma'am, we can do it by Zoom, mm -hmm. um, the trainings. The oh, so each one will be in their own classroom this Thursday, and you're going to train them from there. Okay, I missed that. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Very informative. Thank you. Thank you. All right, item 2B, pre-K update. Ms. Carmen, you want to come give us an update on this? Good evening. Thank you, Ms. Bravan. Okay, so um, I'm here to update you on our early childhood program. Um, Last time we spoke, we had applied to be a Ready Start Network, and I'm happy to say that we were approved by the state to be a Ready Start Network. So now we are Ready Start Tangipa Hope. And as part of that work that we did, I told y'all we were developing a website. Well, it's <coughs> not live yet, but here's a little snapshot up here. This is our website that um, we're going through it with a fine tooth comb to make sure everything's right. But for an early childhood parent, someone with birth to five children, this is a website that the parent can go to to see what are my options for child care, what are my options for school. So we have the Head Start, Public School, and Child Care. And if you would click on Head Start, it would be fine. Um, each program has, is, I think it's up at the top. Yeah, right there. So once they click, there's the information to call. And if you go down, it, you can find a center. So if you keep going down, find a center. And this is going to be the same on each of our programs. These are, um, that, those are the icons for all of our Head Starts in the program. So if you click public school, all of our public school, um, school that, uh, that offer pre-K classes would come up. And then child care, all the child cares in our, um, in our network. Now these are not all the child cares in Tanchapaho Parish. These are all the child cares in our network that are type three child care centers. And type three centers, they accept CCAP funding. So that's a little bit um, different. So it's not every possible pre-K uh, child care only type three child cares. So we're really excited about this. Um, hopefully we'll launch it very soon. So we just wanted to give you a little glimpse of that. And um, remember a part of being a Ready Start Network, it had four pillars that we have to follow. We had to create a blueprint, which I've talked to you about before. We have to build a coalition, which is you know getting people on board with early education. Um, we have to develop a governing, a, a governing body, so we'll be working on that. And then the last part is fundraising. But as part of being approved as a Ready Start Network, um, we are allocated $100,000 for this work. Um, and so we follow our blueprint to use this funding for. So um, we have four goals, and one is for curriculum. Um, the goal is to have curriculum in every early childhood classroom by 2023. Well, our public school classes already have tier one curriculum. The Head Start classes already have tier one curriculum. Many of the child care classes have tier one curriculum, but not all. So we'll be using part of this funding to equip our child care classes, birth to, to four years old with tier one curriculum. And then we will train our teachers. So that's a goal also. Uh, goal two is to increase uh, professional development, which increases their achievement because these students are also assessed. It's not the LEAP assessment, but they are still assessed. Um, the goal number three is to expand access to our programs, which means offer more seats. 
which right now is difficult with people having choices and none of these programs are mandatory. So we have the seats right now, we, we're trying to get people um, to come apply for them. And then our fourth goal is uh, parent involvement and access to resources. So this is going to be um, the avenue that parents can go to to see what their resources are. Um, there is a resources tab, Miss Cindy, if you could click the resources tab. This is what we have um, now. Like I said, it's not in my number. They call my number for everything. But we have the library, and it's just different things that the parents can go to for early, early uh, childhood learning. Um, part of this work also, um, like I said, the access. So remember, part of our network, we have eight child care, uh, Head Start locations. We have 28 child care centers. 14 public schools that house pre-K, and we have five public school classes in diverse delivery settings. And a diverse delivery setting is a Head Start or a child care. We have two public classes at uh, Central Tangy Head Start and Independence, and we have uh, three, we have one in Hammond, that's part of an extension of Woodland Park, and we have two in Ponchatoula, extensions of Perrin. So we're working hard to fill those classes. Um, so that's, that's the, the big work right now, the phone's ringing constantly. And then also part of this early childhood work, we have, um, we, we train directors too of child cares. They're like the principals of the child care centers. And we're happy to say that one of our directors was chosen out of a competitive application to attend the Louisiana Early Learners Academy. So she'll be a fellow for this program. It's a 10, uh, 10 month executive level program for directors. So we're proud of her, it's Brandy Kellum, and she works for Bright Horizons in Hammond at North Oaks. So she'll be going through this program, so we'll have one in our district, and she can share with our other directors what she, what she uh, the learning that she has from that experience. So we're proud to announce that. Um, and so finally, the big question is uh, working on our seats, and we, we are working on filling our seats, and this is, we fill the seats for public schools. We take applications for everybody. If they want to apply for Head Start or child care, they can call my office. We schedule an appointment. We do them over the phone. Um, but we fill, actually fill our seats for public schools. And so right now, our full schools, uh, Champ Cooper is full, Eastside's full, Independence Leadership on campus is full, LaRondra and Perrin on campus is full. So we're working hard for the other ones. Um, of course, as soon as we fill one, we have 10 parents call wanting the virtual option. And Jill did a great job of showing you what our pre-K virtual option. We didn't want to offer it at first because pre-K is so hands-on. However, the state uh, came out and said they would pay us for our students who are attending in a virtual environment. So we, we joined the team over there and uh, our pre-K teachers developed their content and we're very proud of them. It is a lot of work. And so now we're trying to get training for our parents. We're doing everything that everyone else is doing. So um, hopefully, um, we can get everybody where they need to be and fill our seats and have the best environment for our children. Carmen, where, which schools do you have, public schools, do you have seats available? That might be information that the board might want to know. Like everywhere but those. <coughs> um, per everywhere but Chain Cooper. And like I said, they're, they're calling to go virtual, so it changes literally every okay, five minutes. Gotcha. Yeah. You know, right now I have um, 57 virtual students that are locked into virtual. And I, I, locked in, I mean they have said that that's the, the model they want. But um, our pre-K teachers are calling their parents today and tomorrow to schedule their orientations. And so they're, they're emailing me, this child wants virtual, this child wants virtual. So my office will contact these parents to explain the virtual option and what they have to do and the commitment. And then uh, we'll make a decision together. Because pre-K is different because it's not a mandatory grade. So parents do have the option not to send them. We don't want that. We want to either offer a quality virtual program or an in-person program. So that's what we're working on. Um, it's, it's a challenge, but everything is these days, and that's what we're trying to do. But the thing, the thing that's different about pre-K with the virtual option, because our funding depends on seats in the classroom every month. I have to complete a report every month on how many pre-K students are in their seats and we get $458 per month per student. That attends 74% of the days we offer every month. So I send that to the state, the state pays us every month for that amount of students. So it's very important that we fill those seats. So um, I'm just going to give you the example of LaRonger. It is full right now, or it was two today. It may not be in a little while, but it was earlier. 
So if that parent decides they want the full virtual model, they're not going to be taught by the LaRange or pre-K teacher because we need those seats filled so we can get the funding to pay our teachers. So we have nine virtual teachers throughout the district who are going to be virtual and we're doing some in-person uh, students also. So we're putting five kids in the class and then they'll have a few virtual students too. Um, and then if the mom decides in a couple of weeks that she wants to go back to school, if LaRondra has a seat, she can absolutely go back. But if the seat is filled, her option would be to either remain a virtual student or she can attend any other program in which she qualifies and they have a, a, a seat available. Any other questions? Ms. Simmons? Yeah, the criteria for being able to be in the, the virtual pre-K is the same as it used to be when they actually came to school? Yes, ma'am. We're following the same eligibility requirements. They have to be eligible, or we can use a teacher, a Title I teacher for an over-income student. We're using those same guidelines. So, oh, okay. So over-income can... If we have a seat available, we have to feel income eligible first, but if hmm. seats remain after the income eligibles are filled, then over-income can be placed. So say if you have uh, in, in, uh, at La Ronde, you have, is it, how many is in a classroom if they're actually sitting in the class? 20. 20. And we're keeping it the same virtual. No one's going to have and if, and if 25 signed up, can the other five do it virtual? They can if we have seats in other places. Other places. Okay, yes. good. As long and as you'll get the money for them too? We only get money for the LA4 teachers, uh, uh, LA4 students. So if they qualify, that means they're eligible based on the income limits. We get funding for those students. We don't get funding for students in a Title I classroom. So even though we may have an income eligible student in a Title I classroom, we can't claim that seat because it's being paid for out of Title I funds. Okay, thank you. Any others? <coughs> thank you, Ms. Brabham. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, very good. All right. Committee reports. Item 3A, Finance Committee from July 21st, 2020. Do we have a motion that we accept those reports? Make a motion that we accept the report. Sanders made the motion to accept. <laughs> Second. Second by Ms. Dominguez. Any discussion? Call for vote. Voting is open. Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. Item 3B, Finance Committee from August the 4th, 2020. Do I hear a motion to accept that report? I make a motion to accept. Mr. Minguez made the motion. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Mr. Westmoreland. Any discussion? Hearing none, call for vote. Voting is open. Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Item 3C, Personnel Committee from July 21st, 2020. Do we hear a motion to accept that report? I'll make the motion. Ms. Simmons made the motion. Second. Second by Ms. Dominguez. Any questions? No public input. Call for a vote. Voting is open. Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Dilley to introduce one of our new APs. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Um, at our last personnel committee meeting uh, on July 21st, our board approved, our committee approved uh, Ms. Leslie Cutie as the new assistant principal at ha uh, Hammond Westside, and of course, tonight, final approval. So I would like to, first of all, congratulate Ms. Cutie and have her come up. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Um, I first would like to thank the board and Ms. Dilley for this opportunity to serve in a different capacity. I've been a leader for quite a while in Tangerine Parish, but not in this capacity, so thank you for that opportunity. Um, I would also like to thank my wonderful school, Hammond Westside. Um, the leadership there is great, and I look forward to learning a lot from those guys. Um, 
I've learned a lot in the past, but they've been teaching me quite a bit here lately. Um, and so I, learned, I look forward to learning more there, too. And then I'd like to just thank my family. Um, sorry. Yes. I tell them I want to go get a master's degree. They're like, go for it. I tell them I want to go get another certification. Go for it. I tell them I want to apply for a different position. Go for it. So they put up with a lot from me to help me get to where I am so that I can serve our students. And just one thing I want to just remind everybody, Thursday's a big day for our teachers to come back. But we are stronger together, and yes. we're going to do a great job. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I would like to say that uh, Miss Cutie's mother is uh, Miss Leslie uh, Durio. That um, Renee Durio. Yeah. I'm sorry. So yeah, it's been a while, uh, and she worked for us for many years. Still uh, recovering, and uh, she's still recovering actually. <laughs> uh, but I wanted to say hello to her, and uh, I do want to thank uh, Leslie's family uh, for her for the support uh, for her uh, during her career and her education. Thank you. Congratulations again. Item 3D, Policy Committee meeting from July 28th, 2020. Do I hear a motion to accept that report? I make a motion to accept. Mr. Dominguez made the motion, second by Mr. Westmoreland. Any questions? Any public input? Call for vote. Voting is open. Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Item 4A, under the superintendent's report, consider approval of certificate of substantial completion for the Laranger High School Wastewater Treatment Facility by McKinnis Brothers Construction. Yep. I would just like to ask the board to uh, give us approval. We have the substantial completion of that water uh, wastewater system, and we would ask the board to approve that tonight. I make that motion. Motion made by Ms. Simmons. Second. Second by Ms. Abrams. Any questions, comments, public input? Hearing none, vote. Call for vote. Voting is open. Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Item B. Ms. Dilley? Yes. Um, Mr. President, we would like to ask the board to consider uh, approval for us to refer in the revisions that we have for the 2020-21 Pupil Progression Plan to our policy committee, um, one of our upcoming policy committee meetings. Do we hear that in form of a motion? I make the motion to approve that. Motion made by Mr. Westmoreland to send this to the policy committee. Seconded by? Second. Mr. Mingez. Any questions? Concerns? Discussion? Call for vote. Voting is open. Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Ms. Dilley? Yes. Um, for other board updates, I just wanted to um, update the board um, that we're, our whole team is, continu is continually participating in statewide calls, um, both with health experts um, as well as uh, Department of Education. We have a superintendent's, a regional superintendent's call that we get on once a week. Uh, I know Mr. Jenko participates as well on a separate call with uh, his constituents that, um, uh, his colleagues that from across the state, the same as uh, Dr. Hurst. And so um, we are staying up to date. We're not working in a silo, but we're actually networking with other districts and learning about what they're doing and why they're doing it and sharing plans. And so we'll continue to do that um, as we move toward the start of school. Uh, also, for the past three weeks, we've held Zoom calls with our principals. Um, and in some cases, our assistant principals have been in on those calls or those meetings regarding the opening of school. Um, we've had uh, two calls a week. 
I think for the last three weeks uh, regarding the, that, and I think it's been very beneficial for our administrators. Um, our custodial supervisor and maintenance team has been out and about distributing supplies, uh, providing training for our school teams on how to uh, utilize the, um, the cleaning materials correctly. And um, I saw today a schedule that Mr. Schnabach, uh, his secretary, pushed out uh, to all the principals where we talked about our last meeting about how they re can record uh, when those things are done throughout the day. Um, we will continue to provide updates on our website and through our Facebook page as we as we move throughout the year and uh, you know as things change you know or if it change from the statewide perspective. Um, also, I want to remind the public that we do have a detailed plan on our website uh, that we update weekly, and it's not that we're changing our plan; it's that we're making those adjustments that are occurring. Uh, with guidelines and reopening and policy that our board approves and so forth. So that is updated um, each week on our website uh, for your viewing. Um, also, I wanted to mention that today we emailed all of our employees about uh, returning uh, to school on Thursday. And we have set up an email address for um, employees and parents to report any concerns that they may have in terms of uh, COVID and safety uh, at the school. For instance, if there's a particular issue uh, at the school that they feel like uh, needs to be addressed uh, re in regards to the safety and well-being of the students and the faculty, uh, they have a way to report that. And we can uh, support the school in getting what they need in order to resolve that issue. So it's not a got you. I want to make that clear. Uh, it's a you know quick way for them to report to us so we can help uh, the situation and, and help resolve it. Um, I also want to mention, I, I mentioned to our board last week when we gathered uh, a couple of us uh, together on Friday, that we, we do have a plan for the dissemination of our Chromebooks. Uh, and if you think about the mass undertaking of distributing 20,000 Chromebooks, it can be pretty overwhelming. And so um, our team has just decided that we're going to distribute those in waves. Uh, so we'll have a first wave, which is sort of our first priority. And those will be our students that, of course, uh, in 712, who are full virtual. Um, then we'll have a, another wave of distribution that will include our um, three through six uh, students that are in the buildings. And then our K-2 students will be in that third wave. So um, we have to take it in pieces in order to be able to get that, that equipment out to our schools. And so I just wanted to, to let the public know, especially that you know, if your child you know, shows up on the soft start day on the 12th and that they do not get their Chromebook that very first day, that it's, that's OK. We do have a plan to get those out uh, in, a, in, a, in a phased distribution uh, over the next couple weeks. And I think that's all my updates. All right. I do have Over. a question for you, Ms. Stilley. Yeah. I've been getting a lot of questions about uniforms. I know we haven't put our policy in place as of yet. What do parents need to do as far as uniforms for their children to come back to school as of right now? They yes. have to buy uniforms. Yes, the uniforms, students are expected to have uniforms. It's the same as it was last year uh, in terms of you know what they can wear. Um, in addition to that, of course, is the mask uh, that's, that's required. And um, for students that are full virtual, in, uh, especially in the uh, K through 6, who choose to be full virtual, uh, there will be established times that parents can come and pick up the Chromebooks um, for those students. But even on the soft days, where we want our students in uniform uh, for the soft days for orientation, uh, as well as the firm start, which will be, or the hard start, which will be uh, August the 24th. So it's safe to say that they can follow the guidelines from last year's policy yes. for now. Yes. And 7th through 12th grade are required to be in uniform yes. on soft days. Yes. Okay. okay. Any other questions for the superintendent? Yeah, I have a question. Mr. Uh, so 20,000 Chromebooks, so even those that may already have one, they'll just get one from us too? Yes, we, we're going to issue a Chromebook to every student. Right, even, even though they may have one. Yes. Yeah, to make it 
equitable. Yes, across the board. Well, and there, we're going to be expecting them to use the one yes. we issued yes. because a lot of the features that we just talked about are things that are only going to be on these devices, like the the Guardian and app that is and correct. all that stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. Mr. Bush, you had something? So we'll go back to the, uh, change it to lunch breakfast. We'll go back to the grab and go situation. That, has that been set up at different sites for 7 through 12th graders? 7 through 12 will be grab and go, and we have uh, sites that have been identified for the grab and go sites. I think there's three or four of them across the parish that um, in each of the areas for grab and go for 7 12. Any other superintendent questions? Okay, moving on then to item 5A, consider and adopt the adjusted 2020 millage rates determined at the reassessment. Mr. Snodderbach. Thank you, Mr. Board President. Again, you all going to hear me mm -hmm. read again, but um, we do like to uh, present the administration is presenting resolution number one, and it reads, be it resolved by the Tangibahoa Parish School System of the Parish of Tangibahoa, Louisiana, in a public meeting held on August 4th, 2020, which meeting was conducted in accordance with the open meeting law and the additional requirements of Article 7, Section 23C of the Louisiana Constitution and Revised Statute 47, 1705B, that the following adjusted millage rates be and he, they are hereby levied upon the dollars of the assessed valuation of all property subject to ad valorem taxation within the parish for the year 2020 for the purpose of raising revenue. Constitutional District 100, millage 4.05 mills. Hammond District number one, Hammond Ma Magnet School Tax, millage 14.94 mills. Hammond District number one, alternative program, millage 2.99 mills. Be it further resolved that the assessor of the parish of Tangibahoa shall extend upon the assessment roll for the year 2020 the taxes herein levied and the tax collector of said parish shall collect and remit the same to the taxing authority in accordance with law. We'd like to uh, have a motion. Do I hear that in form of a motion? We adopt the resolution. I make a motion to accept. <clears throat> Motion to accept the resolution or to adopt the resolution by Mr. Dominguez, seconded by? I'll second it. Mr. Westmoreland. Any discussion? Mr. Duncan. Mr. Snottlebach or Mr. Moody, uh, so I just want to make sure that I'm understanding what we're doing because these are not, in fact, the rates that we're going to collect at the end of the year, but we're having to adopt a resolution that recognizes the adjusted rate, even though these are not the rates that we're going to collect. I'm, uh, is it? That, that's absolutely correct. What the assessor has done is he's. This is an assessment year, so he um, reassessed the rates on our district to levy or to generate the same revenue amount uh, based on the higher assessed value. So he lowers the millage rate to generate the same revenue. But I guess what I'm asking is, if this is not the rate that we're going to collect, because the one coming right behind this one is going to say that we're not going to collect at this rate, we're going to collect at the same That's rate. absolutely correct, Mr. Duncan, but this is the process that the Louisiana has put in place to roll back and roll forward these millages. And, and that's what I was So, So there's, I guess, the statute that's referenced here says that we have to adopt a resolution that recognizes this lower rate and then we come right behind it and adopt a resolution that actually says what we want to collect. That's correct. Okay. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Debate? Public input? Hearing none, we'll call for a voice vote on this matter because it is required. Ms. Simmons? Yes. Ms. Dominguez? Yes. Mr. Duncan? Yes. Mr. Toller? Yes. Ms. Abrams? Yes. Mr. Bush? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Westmoreland? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Ms. Jenkins. Item 
5B, consider and adopt the adjusted millage rates determined at the reassessment and the increased rates being levied not to exceed the prior year's maximum so as to roll forward along with other authorized millages not subject to reassessment for the year 2020. Mr. Snodderbaugh. Thank you, Mr. Board President. I present y'all resolution number two. It reads, be it resolved by the Tangipahoa Parish School System of the Parish of Tangipahoa, Louisiana, in a public meeting held on August 4, 2020, which meeting was conducted in accordance with the open meeting law and the additional requirements of Article 7, Section 23C of the Louisiana Constitution and Revised Statute 47, 1705B, that the taxing district voted to increase the millage rates but not in excess of the prior year's maximum rates on all taxable properties shown on the official assessment roll for the year 2020, and then collected the revenues from said taxes shall be used only for the specific purposes for which said taxes have been levied. Said millage rates are as follows. Constitutional District uh, 100, uh, new uh, 2020 levy, 4.06 mills. Hammond District number one, Hammond Magnet School Tax, the 2020 levy is 15.0 mills. Hammond District number one, Alternative Program, the 2020 levy is 3.0 mills. The Sumner District 116, 10.0 mills. Independence District number 39A, 12.5 mills. Be it further resolved that the assessor of the Parish of Tangipahoa shall extend upon the assessment roll for the year 2020 the taxes herein levied, and the tax collector of said parish shall collect and remit the same to said taxing authority in accordance with law. Do we hear that in form of a motion to adopt the resolution? So I would like to make a motion to adopt the resolution for the millage. Motion made by Mr. Minguez, second by Mr. Duncan. Any questions? Comments? Public input? Once again, I'd like to call for a voice vote, please. Mr. Westmoreland? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Bush? Yes. Ms. Abrams? Yes. Mr. Toller? Yes. Mr. Duncan? Yes. Ms. Dominguez? Yes. Ms. Simmons? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. On to item six, personal privilege. Start to my left tonight, Mr. Bush. Good, thank you. I'm good. Okay. All right. Ms. Simmons? Yeah, I just wanted to thank all the individuals and staff like tonight for all the work you've done to get this virtual school situation going. It's, I'm amazed, and I, it must be an enormous job. I'm sure it is, but I want to thank all of you, not just tonight's group, but the others that have presented. Thank you. Mr. Duncan? Ms. Abrams? Nothing. Mr. Moore? <clears throat> Yes, and I, I, I just want to reiterate, I, am, I have a, a very strong passion about uh, starting school again. I know the, the administration and, uh, and the staff, you know, all, all of the uh, em school employees have done, you know, a, a wonderful job working with what they have. And, and I appreciate all of the efforts. But I also want to extend my concerns for every parent who can keep their child at home and, and homeschool your child to do so. Uh, because, um, like I said at the last meeting, there, there is absolutely no way that we can give you 100% assurance, and I just want to make sure that you reconsider that in your final decisions about whether or not you put your child on the bus. Uh, because from the time that they leave your home, that protection that you've given them is no longer there. Um, my prayers and my hopes are that, you know, we won't have any casualties. We won't have, that there won't be any children who get, who get, who get affected. But uh, just, just um, be aware that uh, you are in total control because you do not have to send your children to school. Mr. Westmoreland? Just like to say congratulations also to all the people who worked on this virtual. It's uh, kind of a maze for me, but I'm sure my children would do fine with it. But uh, I, I know and I appreciate everything that y'all have done. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mingus. Again, I would like to thank all of you 
that have worked so hard to not just the, the part about the academics, but the cleaning, the bus drivers, everyone that's been involved in making a plan to make this successful. Our administration have worked extremely hard and all of our staff to do the best possible that we can under the circumstances and I really do appreciate it. I also want to commend our, uh, our immediate staff and Ms. Sandedge, uh, some of us came Friday for in service. It was a lot of work went into that in service and I appreciate it. I learned a lot more detail and insight that I didn't know before and I felt a lot more comfortable. Then I left from here, I went home and I did a two day workshop with the state school board and other school board members across the, uh, the state. Our superintendent of education presented, uh, our governor's wife Donna Edwards presented. There were many, um, there were four legislators that came and, and gave us some information and it was quite in, uh, an eye opening experience of how much has been done across our state. So I think we're all on the same page that we want to move forward as best we can and keep our children safe and try to educate our children the best we can. And I really appreciate that. And I'm not sure, Ms. Jenkins, if it's appropriate to make note about the workshop for the, the COUs that we were able to get. So thank you, Ms. Stilley um, and your assistant superintendents and everyone else. It's been a lot of work and I, I know y'all are very tired and you've done a great job and I'm just gonna keep our fingers crossed and pray everything is good. Absolutely. <clears throat> And congratulations again, Ms. Cutie, for Hammond Westside. We appreciate you and uh, look forward to working with you. Uh, and once again, I'll echo what some of the board members have said. The staff that has put together this, the virtual side of this, as well as all the teachers that have been working in their classrooms, getting ready. This is not a typical start by any means to a school year, but there's a lot of employees that are putting forth a lot of effort to make this the best possible, and I appreciate every one of their um, efforts. And last word, Ms. Dilley. I, I can hardly recognize folks with the mask on, but I think that's Ms. Starkey in the back from LaRonta High. And I want to say to Ms. Starkey, if you'd stand up for a second, she was on our social studies team that developed the, uh, it's beautiful the, in, the, in the material. We actually think that, you know, people are going to, Try to steal it from other places is so good um, and I just want to commend the team that worked with um, Ms. Starkey on the um, social studies it's, it's just looks so it looks like something you would buy um, and so it's very very nice and and so please extend the thanks to the other teachers you know that worked on this platform yeah. absolutely okay hearing nothing else I'll Entertain a motion to enter executive session, and I'll let. No, I want you to talk about uh, number D uh, cases under section D. The other two can be removed. A is a duplicate, so. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, do I hear a motion to consider the case, Lacaron Mitchell and Mitchell Mitchell or Michael Mitchell, on behalf of the minor child, um, Mitchell versus Berkeley Insurance Company, Intentional Repair School Board. So moved. I'll second that motion. Thank you, Mr. Moody. Appreciate that. Motion by Mr. Duncan, seconded by Mr. Bush. All in favor? Any opposed? Aye. Channel 17, proudly serving the Florida parishes. On item 7D. On 7D, uh, Mr. President, we'd uh, um, move that we adopt council's recommendation. Second. We have a motion to accept council's recommendation. We have a second, Mr. Westmoreland. Any discussion? Any opposed? Hearing none, motion moves. Motion carries by common consent. Anything else to be brought up? Nothing? Meeting adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>